Hey, it's Cornell here from rockclimbtips.com, and this is probably the strangest climbing video that I've ever done. And the reason for that is because I'm in a kitchen of all places, as opposed to a rock climbing gym or out on the cliff somewhere. And the reason I'm here in this kitchen is to show you a really good recipe that I have used for quite a while now, for both before the climb and after the climb. Now, before you climb, you want to make sure that you've got the right type of fuel in your body to help maximize your rock climbing performance. So that's what this recipe is all about. And additionally, once you've done your climbing for the day, I don't know about you, but I want to get as much benefit from that workout as possible because that's going to help me with future climbs as well. So I want to make sure that I get the most muscle gain possible and that I get the most fat loss possible as well. So that because you know if I'm less fat and stronger, I'm going to be able to climb a lot better next time. So that's what this recipe is all about. It's helped me lose somewhere around 20 pounds in the last six months. Obviously, I've been working out on top of that, uh, but I mean, it's really, really good for that. And uh, I just wanted to share it with you. Hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have some of your own recipes that you think work really good for climbing. And that's it. Let's get started. I'm sure it'll work really good for you. All right, so let's get started. So two things you need to know is that one, this recipe is very flexible. So if there's something in here you don't like, you can always substitute it with something else. I like to actually switch it up, like switch up the different kinds of beans that I use or the different sauces. So it makes it basically a completely new meal. So you're just modifying it depending on what you feel like. So it's really good for that. Two is the recipe is on the website. So if you're watching this on YouTube, click on the link below, go to the rockclimbtips.com website, and you can actually see the recipe there. You can print it off or you know do with it whatever you wish. All right, so let's get started. All right, so to start, we need some sort of healthy meat. So uh, tur chicken bacon, for example. I often use turkey bacon as well. You can really switch it up to whatever you'd like. If you have some chicken breast left over from the dinner before, you could use that. I mean, the bottom line is you want something that's low fat, high in protein. Protein's a very big part of this meal. All right, so pick whatever you'd like. Um, here I have two slices. What I'm going to do is basically tear them up into little pieces. So I'm going to do that right now. All right, now I'm just going to spray my pan with Pam. I like to use that because it keeps basically the fat content low. Next I'm going to put it on to medium heat. Alright, once it's heated, what I'm going to do is place the strips of the turkey bacon onto the pan. And I want to make sure that they're not overlapping. And the reason I do this is because I actually like it when they're crispy. I mean, it's a personal preference thing. Maybe you don't like your bacon crispy, for example, but if you do like something like crispy bacon, then chances are you're gonna want this turkey bacon crispy too. So I like to lay it down and not actually overlap it and let it basically get crispy. And you can even turn it on to a little bit higher than medium heat just so that it basically gets crispy faster. All right, so while that's getting crispy, we can move on to vegetables. And really, you can add whatever vegetables you want. Now, what's worked really well for me is I definitely like to use onion. I actually, I'm going to throw it on in just a moment, just so that it starts to cook as well together with the turkey bacon. Recently, I've been experimenting with different types of vegetables, and I found that celery actually works really well too. It gives the meal a nice bit of crunch, which is actually really nice. So I definitely recommend at least trying it out. Next, I like to use some sort of pepper. So here I've got some red peppers, you know, you can use green peppers, whatever you'd like. Once again, you know, this is a very flexible recipe, so use whatever vegetables you enjoy. This is not one of those meals that you eat, it's healthy, but it's disgusting. It's actually a very delicious meal, it's very filling, and it doesn't get boring because you can actually switch up different things. So use different vegetables, uh, use different sauces, different types of meat, and it still can result in a very, very healthy meal. All right, so to start, the next step is let's put these onions in together with the turkey bacon. All right, so by now the turkey bacon's getting really nice and crispy. I'm going to throw in the onions, and really you just add as much as you want. Obviously, if you put too many onions, it's going to start overpowering, and you're going to feel like you're just eating onions. So, you know, if you love onions, I'm putting a fair bit in here. But yeah, be careful not to overdo it. You don't want that to kill the flavor. All right, next we have beans, and you can really use whatever beans you want. I personally like black beans a fair bit. Really high in fiber, keep you full for a very long time. They have protein in them as well. Excellent, excellent food. Um, sometimes I like to use kidney beans as well. These guys right here, so the red ones. And then sometimes I like to switch it up with lentils as well. So all of those are really, really good choices. But once again, you can experiment to whatever works best for you. 
right next we do beans I just put them in the strainer give them a nice little rinse and they're pretty much ready to go on the pan okay so now that the turkey bacon is all nice and crispy the onions are pretty much sauteed now as well now we can start adding the rest of the toppings so I'm gonna add whatever vegetables I want however much I want and I'm also going to add the beans. Now generally what I like to do is basically use half a can of beans per meal. So this is a full can right here, so I'm just going to use half of it. There we go. And we let that simmer. Alright, so while that's simmering, let's talk about the different types of sauces. Now, here you're going to have a lot of variety and really what's nice about the sauce part is that you can switch it up to whatever you'd like, to whatever mood you're in at the time. So even though you can be using the same meal all the time, the sauce alone can really, really switch up the taste. So it's like you never actually get bored of eating this meal. Now, what I like to use personally is if I'm in the mood for something a little bit more sweeter, then I will actually use uh, some ketchup. And I know it sounds kind of weird and beans, ketchup, I don't know, but it actually tastes really, really good, gives it a nice level of sweetness. What I also like to do is generally like to have things a bit spicy. So what I found is this sriracha sauce I've been using forever and it is really, really good. So I definitely uh, recommend it if you like things a little bit more spicy. And especially if you're not a huge fan of beans and you don't like the base bean taste all that much, you know, the hot sauce tends to mask that a bit. So uh, it can actually make the meal so very, very enjoyable for you. If you have another hot sauce you like, like Frank's Red Hot or Tabasco or whatever, you can use that. It's completely up to you. Experiment to what works best for you. In addition, if you do want something a bit sweeter, I find the barbecue sauce works pretty good as well. All right, now one thing to keep in mind is that a lot of sauces like barbecue sauces and even ketchup, they do actually have a lot of sugar in them. And so obviously sugar isn't the best thing in the world um, if you're trying to be all health conscious. And what that will do is if you have a lot of barbecue sauce in this meal for example you might get a sugar crash a little bit later so once your body starts to process all that food you're gonna start feeling a lot more tired so you know I would say use the sugary sauces sparingly and just keep that in mind that it could affect you alright so in this case we're gonna do a little bit of a nice sort of sweet and spicy sauce so what I'm going to do is stir a little bit here just so that nothing gets burnt and what I will do is now add the sauces. So I will add a little bit of the barbecue sauce. And I will add a bit of the sriracha sauce, which I'm a really, really big fan of. This stuff is really spicy, so you definitely don't want to add too much. All right. And what I do is I add it on top, and now I let it simmer so all the flavors basically get into the food, it, it tastes really, really good this way. So I let it simmer for quite a few, for several minutes, and then after it's done that for maybe, I don't know, a minute or two, I then basically just stir it in. Okay, so it's been about a minute or two. The sauce is on top, I am now going to stir it. So now the sauce is gonna go through the food, it's gonna be everywhere, and this way, no matter where I bite, I'm gonna get the same taste throughout, and it's gonna be really, really good. Alright, so once I stir the sauce, I just let it maybe simmer for just a little bit more, maybe about 20 seconds or so, 30 seconds, and then when that's all set, I can basically serve it on a plate and it's ready to go. Alright, so it's all ready to go. Now it doesn't look like the most delicious thing in the world, but it actually is, and it's extremely healthy. Make sure to have it with a lot of water after your climb, if you're eating this after your climb, and that will actually really, really fill you up. So it's a very filling meal, not too many calories, not too many fat, and a large, large amount of protein. What you can also do to switch it up a little bit is you can also add avocado, not in the pan, but just when you're done, you can put it on the side, and that can really give you a nice taste if you like that. What you can also do, and I actually do this quite often, is you can also use egg whites. So when the beans are basically done cooking and you're about to serve it, at the very, very last stage, pour a little bit of egg whites onto it. And really, it's not going to fill you up much, but it gives it a little bit of a flavor, and also the egg whites do actually have a fair bit of protein and are actually very, very healthy for you. If you do like that fat, if you don't mind the cholesterol, you can always add it in a real egg as well. Um, so that's another way that you can switch up the meal, you know, keep it exciting, keep it fresh, and keeping it delicious. Well, I hope you liked this video. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. 
Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you like this video, I actually have another free video for you that complements this one really, really well. And it's actually directly from the trainer that I personally use for my own physical health and fitness. So you can get the link for that video just on the rockclimbtips.com blog. I've put the link down below this video just so you can get to it easier. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think and stay tuned for more videos. All right. Cheers.